like it, but it will eventually go live. All right, we are live. Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert with The Ted Show and I am super excited to have on Joshua Johnson with Wall Crawl. If you haven't heard about it, I love the tagline that Joshua gave. It's not your mother's photo studio. <laughs> I mean, come on, that was brilliant. So just give us a second to make sure that it's going live, that I can see it, and then we're gonna share it all over the place. Uh, yes, we are live. So I'm gonna share this. Um, Yes. And we are golden. Okay, there we go. All right, so welcome to the show. So I I was very excited to, I've actually been to Wall Crawl. Yes. Uh, had no idea what it even meant. Seemed very foreign to me. Didn't, didn't understand the concept. Of course, this is pre-corona. Of course. And um, I was... I had the best time at your place. And it wasn't because, and I'm gonna give her a shout out. Uh, my friend Eileen couldn't seem to not kick over the, the <laughs> here at the front of your office. By the way, you were very patient. Uh, but it was just set up in such a beautiful, really easy to flow manner that you can't really describe unless you're there. So um, we're going to get to that, but let's do the origin sure. story. Tell us a little bit about you, Joshua, and welcome to the show. Sure. Well, thank you very much for having me, Ted. Um, I have been in Orlando for, I don't know, maybe 12 or so years now. Um, I originally came here to go to UCF, do my master's degree, and then kind of, you know, stuck around. Uh, my background is entrepreneurship and marketing. I have um, had a number of businesses in different industries over the years, and i um, Eventually, a few years ago, my wife and I got married. My wife is a full-time fashion blogger. Um, and so that kind of got me into photography. And once I got into photography and that kind of, I started to develop a passion for that. Uh, I'm one of those lifetime learners. So like when I start getting into something, I get it's a little bit of a hobby. And then it's like, okay, no, if I'm going to do this, I need to get better at it and, you know, start watching YouTube videos, all that kind of stuff. So, um, so I really got into it and eventually decided that, you know, we spent several years traveling consistently and just creating content, which is a lot of fun. Um, but we decided we wanted to kind of plant some, some roots here locally. And uh, so we bought a house a few years ago and we were just kind of trying to start spending some more time here. And, um, and that led to deciding that we should open a business that was more physically located in Orlando. And so originally I was going to, I was looking at opening more of a traditional photography studio. Um, with a little bit of a twist, there's a couple other things that, that I think that, that weren't in the market yet and that, that we could use here. And over the course of, you know, many conversations and, and between me and my wife and um, interviewing a lot of other people, photographers and just people in the community, um, that idea kind of grew and evolved. And, uh, and then we ended up with, with wall crawl. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's just, to me, you can't, unless you're there. All right. Let me, let me back up. I mm -hmm. can't describe it properly. So tell them what wall crawl even means. Cause I have to tell you originally when I think it was Shay, might've mm -hmm. been Shay and Dan Pacheco yep. who had that first event. And I thought, okay, so I'm going to be up against a wall mm -hmm. and I'm going to be taking pictures. Why, why I'm, I'm 95 years old. Why am I taking pictures? I didn't understand the setup. Right. Uh, I didn't understand the concept. So tell them what wall crawl is. Yeah, so um, that's that's been a challenge for us, to be honest with you, because this business model doesn't exist anywhere else. And so it's one of those things where you, you try to explain to people and then they, they kind of have an idea of something else that they've heard of. And so they think that we are that. Um, but really, we're, we're a combination of a several different business models. And, um, and what we've done is we've created essentially 20 different uh, sets that uh, the people can use for photography. And, um, and basically we are the world's first completely customizable photography experience. So you can come in and you can do all of your own photographs. You can just bring in your phone if you want, or you can bring your own DSLR or mirrorless camera. You can come in with a couple, you know, with a couple of friends, you can take each other's photos. You can bring in your own photographer with you. Um, you can have us take photos for you. Uh, and we'll do that with your phone and that's included in the price of admission. So, you know, your ticket price gets you in and we'll even take photos for you with your phone. Um, or you can hire us to take your photos as well. Uh, and then we'll do that with our cameras. We'll edit those images and then we'll deliver those to you depending on the number of images you're, you're, you end up buying. So talk about the inside. It felt like, it, 
I, I expected it to be a smaller space mm -hmm. uh, because when you walk in, you think, okay, well, it's upstairs. It's this, it's not, it, and or maybe it's because of the beautiful the way that you have it beautifully laid out. Mm -hmm. So take them through, like I, the one that I went to, it was around the holidays, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so I can't tell you how many of the pe people I was at that event for because we actually had an event, which is another thing that you all mm -hmm. host and encourage. Uh, people use those as their Christmas photos, their holiday photos, uh, because that's how beautiful the sets are. Yes. So, give, give an idea. I don't give an idea of pre-Corona anyway. What what did your set look like? Give them an idea of how each thing was different, each area was different. Well, uh, yeah, you have to define a specific t point in time because our walls actually change. And so, like I said, when you came in, it was around the holidays. So we had a lot of holiday walls. And in fact, I think you actually came in when we were transitioning to our holiday walls. And so one of them wasn't even complete, although Dan decided that he was going to make that a set anyway and <laughs> got out the ladder and some other stuff and, you know, did, did his thing. <laughs> That's Dan. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, uh, so yes, yeah, so the walls vary depending on the season. Um, we changed them quarterly was the plan. We would have changed them actually uh, this last week. We would have opened on the third, on, on Friday the third with new walls was the, would, would have been our original schedule. So um, we'll see when those walls are going to be changing next. I'm not really sure. Obviously that depends on when we can see if we go back to work, we can open the studio. Um, but anyway, um, we have 20 different sets. Um, for us as content creators, um, for the needs that we had, we would go out and we'd look for places to take photos. We would go to, you know, Wynwood, for example, in Miami, which is really cool. It's a fun experience. Uh, but when you're working with sponsors or if you're really particular about the photos that you want, there's a lot of challenges with that, either whether it's Wynwood or it's Mills 50 or, or anywhere. A lot of those outside places, a lot of people would go um, between the wind and the rain and the heat and all of that stuff. Um, you know, it, it can be tough to really get the picture. You can, you can capture that moment. But if you really want a quality picture, it's a different story. Right. And um, so, that, so, you know, for us, it was a matter of how do we bring those elements indoors and then also incorporate things that you can't do outdoors. So you're not going to find murals outdoors that have, you know, nice furniture, for example. You're not going to have find murals outside that have nice lighting 24 hours a day. You're not going to find murals outside that are in a climate controlled environment where it's 74 degrees, you know, year round. Um, and so these are things that we knew that we could improve upon by, by bringing the art indoors um, and then, you know, opening it up to the public allowing other people to use the space. Um, and so, you know, the, the walls change quarterly. Um, so depending on what's going on with that season, um, it's hard to say what they look like at any given time. My wife is the one actually does all the design. She can give you the breakdown of everything. Um, but in this last quarter, for example, um, we had a wall that we did a partnership with the Orange County Library. So we had this, um, it was a rainbow uh, bookshelf where all of the books on the, on the bookshelf were colored into a rainbow. So it's, it's stepped up in a rainbow fashion. Cool. Um, and there's a, like a bright uh, yellow chair and it's all against a blue wall backdrop. So something like that, that's, it's not necessarily super complex, um, but it takes time to do it. And it's something you couldn't do outdoors. You couldn't just easily throw up and like, okay, cool. This is here for, you know, for us to use. Um, and we know that people are looking for places to take photos. Um, I mean, we know that from our travels. We know that, know that from just walking down Park Ave where we would be doing a photo shoot and we'd be interrupted by somebody who would literally step in exactly where my wife is standing. And then their friend was standing right next to me and they would commence a photo shoot in the middle of shopping, you know? Um, so people are looking to do this um, and they're mostly limited as to what they have access to is where they can. And so we knew we could improve that experience um, and that we could also control that environment, not just for lighting and for temperature, but also the number of people that are there and how much uh, time and space you can actually use on your own to make sure you can get the shots that you want. So, um, you know, for us, when we're open for general admission, we cap it at 20 people, even though it's 4,500 square feet and there's 20 walls. So almost everyone is there, either a pair or a small group. So there's always open walls. There's never a line. There, you know, there's, there's no lines outside. Everyone has a set appointment time that they come in. So say it's, you know, 10 a.m., up to 20 people come in at 10 a.m. and 11 a.m., their session's over and everyone leaves. And then, you know, 11.30, the next session starts. Um, and so it gives us full control over the, over the space and make sure, you know, that, that, that each set has the, the freedom to be able to use in, in multiple ways. So you can shoot all the different angles that you want. You can really take your time and create the content had, you want. You had interactive, which I did two of the interactive ones. Yes. Um, I'm going to give you a shout out because I think the one that I'm going to talk about first, you are very brave. It was a whole bunch of beach balls. <laughs> um, and given the crowd that we had, again, very brave. But I have to tell you that those pictures were amazing. Like it just, 
you just don't, I would have never thought about that. And so there were maybe five of us, six of us maybe on the area that we were seated in. And then somebody threw up the balls and that's the picture that you caught. Yep. Um, and it just, we also did the one, it felt like it was coming out of a jack in the box, but it was, um, it was really cool, but you can do all sorts of things. I don't, I, I know there's where you do the boomerang. Um, mm -hmm. There's just all sorts of things that you can do creative yes. and you guys have just set it up it's kind of it's not a clean palette it's it, it but you've given us the tools to be creative and that's what i i mean i really really loved it those photos that these people were taking look amazing because yeah. of the sets that you set up yeah absolutely well the thing is now more than ever so this is this is basically what ends up happening for us as we're looking at opening a studio and we're interviewing people and we're trying to figure out you know what exactly what we're going to do and where our sweet spots going to be um, one of the things that we began to realize for our conversations is that photography has evolved significantly you know over the last five and ten years um, now almost everybody has a really good phone and or a really good camera and it's on their phone so they have it with them all the time we take more pictures than ever. Um, you know, photography is no longer incrementally expensive to explore because you don't have to pay to print your film. Um, you know, and so uh, you know, you you don't you're not developing and you're not printing them necessarily as much. Although we do do encourage people to print, um, but more than ever, people are taking pictures and they're looking for places to take pictures and they're looking for ways to explore their creativity and they're looking for unique experiences that they can enjoy. Um, where they are able to kind of escape and get away and have some fun. Um, the other part for us that was really important was that we talked with, I talked to so many people. Um, I mean, just, I would literally just interview people, interview people on the street at uh, different events and things like that. And um, especially when I was, was talking with moms, they would tell me how, you know, they would take their kids to these various experiences and, um, and it was a lot of fun, but all of the pictures were of their kids at these experiences and they weren't a part of them. And so for us, it was, okay, well, how do we fix that problem? Well, that's easy. We can always have a photographer on staff that's there just to take pictures for you with your phone. So if nothing else, majority of the time, mom is still taking pictures of her kids, but then when she wants to be in one, we can hop in, grab her phone for her, snap a couple. And now, you know what? She was actually there with her kids. Now it's a memory of her with them and not just a memory of them somewhere else. Um, so that was an important thing that we wanted to address. Um, the other thing we want to address is that because the studio itself hasn't evolved, um, that people are limited in, in how they can explore photography. You know, they can shoot outside, they can shoot in their homes, but there aren't studios that are designed for people to go and really explore it, especially if you're just shooting with your phone. Right. Um, you know, if you wanna spend a couple hundred bucks and go rent a studio, you can do that, but that's cost prohibitive. And so we figured out a way that we could build out the model so that we can kind of do, you know, uh, you know, uh, the sharing, you know, utilize the sharing economy, right? Like if everyone pays a little bit, then they can all access the studio at the same time. And it, it makes sense for us. It makes sense for them financially. Uh, and so everyone can kind of get in there and, and begin to really explore that. Um, and since everyone has a great camera, you know, why not? Why not go and, and see what that next level is, see what you can do next with that, with that hobby or with that profession that you're looking to get into as well. Um, I, I was very, very happy when I left there with the experience. Hmm. Um, what are you doing now, because that's obviously in studio that you would go to. Right. Uh, how are you staying creative and positive and continuing as much of the momentum as you had been building up? Because word of mouth is was is definitely still on the street because I still talk to people. There are people you and I can't see right now that are watching, that are commenting about how amazing their experience at Wall Crawl uh, was. So what are yeah. you doing creatively to stay above the curve? That's a great question. Uh, so um, obviously it's, it's very challenging for us. We actually reduce our capacity. Like I said, we, we um, set our capacity at 20 um, during the rental mission. And when there was first rumblings of uh, Corona and there was concerns, we, before the CDC made announcements, we reduced our capacity to 10 people um, at a time. And then they came out and said, you know, no more groups of, of no more than 10. When they said that we said, okay, everyone who books the studio is getting a, a private studio space basically. So as soon as a family book for a family of four, I would close off the time slot. So it was just the family coming in at a time. So, you know, we were doing everything we could leading into this to, um, to help protect everybody uh, and, and to be able to operate. And then obviously it, it got to the point where it's like, okay, this is no longer what we can do. Uh, so we shut our doors. Um, you know, we're using this time to plan it, looking in the future. I mean, you know, our business just opened in August. So, you know, we're, 
we're just a few months old. Um, and so that obviously makes it very challenging to, to close down. Um, you know, we just went through this, the last week um, was our turnover week where we should have been building out new sets and, and been opening um, this last Friday with, with, new, um, with new designs. Um, so we're working on revamping our schedule and what that looks like, whether or not we're going to um, basically skip an entire uh, quarter of, of new sets and stick with what we have, or if the next quarter is gonna start a little sooner, we're trying to figure that out. Um, but beyond that, what we're really focused on is how we can improve the experience for everybody. You know, I've been following up and, and speaking with our previous customers and, and finding out, you know, more about what they've liked about the experience and what they thought we could have improved. Um, you know, we've encouraged our customers to take the time, you know, since a lot of people right now are finding that they have a little bit more time, um, not everyone, but some, um, we're encouraging them to do things like write Google reviews uh, for us and, and just to share their images, you know. Um, idea. By default, fortunately for us, a lot of people make their images from wall crawl, their profile pictures, and they share them on Facebook and they share them on Instagram. I'm, every day I'm seeing new posts where we're getting tagged and stuff, which is really fun. And sometimes those images are six months old, you know, they're from the very first sets that we had when we first opened. Um, but just trying to encourage people to make sure that they're tagging us in those images um, and that when people are asking, you know, they're letting know that, that, that we're the ones that um, it was at our studio. Um, some people like to have credit for them, like, you know, they don't want to share that, you know, they don't want everyone to go uh, and, and, and use the same sets. <laughs> so that's, that's always kind of um, entertaining. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but then we're working on different ways we can improve the experience. So as I mentioned before, um, you know, people have the ability to buy image packages where we take the photos, we edit them and deliver them. And the way that we've been doing that delivery, I think has been a little bit clunky. It's worked for us. Um, but it wasn't part of original plan either. Um, originally, we weren't going to be doing that. We were just going to have a photographer there to be able to, to shoot photos um, with people's phones. And we were going to do printing on site. And we weren't going to be doing digital image delivery. And uh, that changed very quickly. But we didn't have a really good system in place for doing that. And so um, I spent some time working on um, you know, how I can improve that process and make it better for them. And I think it also create more opportunities for us um, to, to service them better and, and make that better experience. Um, so it's, it's things like that, that, that I know, um, you know, it's all those things where you say like, oh, I really want to work on this and I just don't have time, you know, because we have a brand new business and, you know, you're already working a ton of hours and you're doing everything you can. Um, and so we're, you know, fortunately I've, I've had this running list of things that I'm like, I know I need to do these things. And so I'm really spending a lot of time doing that. Um, it's and then hard outside, for creative, right? Because you're a creative. Yeah, um, well, but I, that's that's the funny thing is, I mean, my background has always been in business. Um, I wouldn't, I would have never considered myself among the creative. Um, I mean, I got into photography a few years ago, but that was my first uh, real foray, I would say, into like any creative endeavors whatsoever. Um, you know, I was supportive of my wife being a blogger and, and doing ph ph photography for that, um, but I never was pursuing anything creatively myself. Um, up until wall crawl. So, um, so yeah, so it's a little bit different. Um, but because of that, I have the, the very much like process mind of like, you know, how are, how do things get done? How do I create the, the manuals so that, you know, when I can pull back and not be there as much, how I can empower my employees to be able to do some of the things that I'm doing now. Um, and you know, then how do we grow the business? How do we expand the business? How do we look at other locations, things like that. So so what are you doing? What are you personally doing? I ask every guest this. Mm -hmm. What are you personally doing to stay positive, uh, running, meditating? Um, I don't know, going through old photos. I'm just throwing stuff out at you. Yeah. What are you doing? I think people are looking for ways and looking what other people are doing to try to, that are trying to stay positive. Sure. Um, well, I think that for one, I, I tend to look for the bright side of things, right? Obviously, this is a very challenging time. Um, I know uh, it, almost immediately when, um, you know, it was said that in Orange County that non-essential businesses had to shut down, I immediately saw photographers talking about how they were closing their studios, that they were shut down, like they were moving on, they were going back to getting a day job or something else. Um, that's, that's not how I operate. Um, and and I, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but I just, I just don't know how to do that. <laughs> um, so for me, it's a matter of like, okay, well, this is what's in front of us now and, and how do we deal with this and, and how do we come out the other side of it? Like, I, I, I don't know how to operate in a way that says, um, okay, this thing is terrible. It shut us down and we're just gonna move on and, and go do something else. Um, I, I don't even understand what that looks like. So for one, I think it's just in my nature to, to try to figure out how to, how to 
um, evolve, grow, and move forward. Um, I think if you look back over history, whenever there's significant times of turmoil such as this, and a lot of businesses do go under, um, it does create a bus- create an opportunity for the businesses that do survive. Yes. Um, and I also think that um, you know, as we still don't know how things are, are going to come back online, and, and once once things are safe, we can reopen. Um, but we're you know we're unique in the fact that we have complete control over the number of people that enter our space. Uh, and so when we reopen, we'll look at ways that we may do that a little bit differently, at least when we first reopen, um, you know, because obviously our safety is the top priority for everyone, uh, myself, my wife, our, our employees and our customers. Um, but we have a lot more flexibility in, in how we can operate. Um, you know, we don't have to do events. We can do shorter sessions and make them all private, you know, so my mind spends its time thinking about those things. Um, my mind spends its time thinking about how um, we can you know, encourage our previous customers to come back. We, you know, we know that they've, they've already been, they've had a good time and, and how we can encourage them to come back and, and how we can care, encourage them to share, um, you know, their experiences. Um, and so I just work on that stuff. Uh, and then outside of that, we're very fortunate. We live on a small lake and, and I have a pair of owls that live in our backyard and I just go out and hang out with them. Uh, and I, and I photograph them all the time. That's so, cool. yeah. All right, so the best thing you guys can do to support local and support businesses like Joshua's that's down for now Mm -hmm. uh, is to follow him, follow Mm -hmm. Wall Crawl, which I tagged in the show, take this video, follow the TED Show, take all of it and share it with your friends because when they do open up, I'm telling you, you don't want to miss the experience. Um, I have been there and absolutely love it and want to go back and have a whole bunch of ideas on how to bring people there. And I just think you're just a generous host when we are there and you just make it fun, but it's fun in a way that I don't think people understand until you actually go there. So like you said, it's not your mother's photo studio. Yeah, you know, one of the things that we really looked at too is the fact that because the photography studio hasn't changed, people have had the same kind of stodgy experience at like a JC Penney Studios or something like that, right? Where it's just like a kind of a color background and no one really wants to be there. You know, it's, it's just not that great of an experience. Um, our goal is that you have great photos when you leave because you had a great time. Like that, that's, that's the basis of it. Whether you're taking the photos or we're taking the photos, you bring your own photographer, whatever that is, our goal is for you to have a great time while you're there. And the product and the byproduct of that is that you have some great images that you are gonna be happy with the images and you're also more importantly, going to be happy with the memory associated with those images. So when you look at them, it's, oh, that was such a great time. You know, like you can't not look at a picture of Dan on the ladder at that event and think he's having the time of his life, you know? (laughs) You're awesome. Joshua Johnson, thank you so much. Wall crawl. Guys, check it out. Follow it. Share the show. Follow it so that when it does open, you guys are some of the first people to go and enjoy because it's absolutely amazing. Thank you for being on the show, my friend. Appreciate you. you. Can't wait to come back. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Take care, guys. See you guys later. Bye. Bye-bye. Maybe bye. Let's see how this works. (laughs) (laughs) See you, buddy. Take care.